today. Can you dig it? If so, we'll show it to you from Selenite Crystals, Ancient Treasures, and Archaeological Artifacts. Travel with AAA's Discover Oklahoma. Hi and welcome to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lally. We're coming to you from the Armstrong Auditorium in Edmond tonight, but we're not here for a concert, but to see a very cool, extraordinary archaeology exhibit. It is really something to see. And it it's is. all part of our show on destinations you can dig. And you're going to be doing that literally here in just a bit. That's right. And right now we're headed out to northwestern Oklahoma, where Shell Wagner and her family are digging up an adventure at the Great Salt Plains. It may take a minute for your eyes to adjust to the spectacle of the Salt Plains National Wildlife Refuge. As foreign a landscape as the moon surface, this seven miles long salt encrusted expanse is perhaps best viewed from the observation tower near the entrance gate. The platform is also a great place to observe migratory waterfowl, some of them endangered, that feed and nest on the plains. They rule the roost here. This is a wildlife refuge after all. But this area, the largest saline flat in the central lowlands of North America, has had many purposes. Indian tribes and early pioneer settlers used the salt. It was also used as a bombing test site in World War II. But it has always been a tourist attraction, which is why my girls and I are here, because even though the salt plains may be devoid of vegetation, they are positively fertile for growing a crystallized form of gypsum, the selenite crystal. We're on a mission to increase our Oklahoma souvenir collection because any Okie worth her salt should have a jar full of these. These crystals found in northwestern Oklahoma are the only ones in the world with the milk chocolate colored hourglass shape inside. A placard near the entrance gives tips for unearthing these one-of-a-kind gems and a cordoned off drive leads you to the designated digging area. Each section is used in a rotating basis to allow time for new crystals to grow. You'll want to bring along a few items to dig for our official state crystal. Shovels, containers for your treasures, water. Start by making a hole, and you won't have to dig very deep before water begins to seep in. Then splash water onto the sides of the hole until crystals emerge. You'll need to be careful with them, they're fragile when they're still wet. So you'll want to let them dry in the sunshine. Crystal digging is permitted April 1st through October 15th, sunrise to sunset and collectors can take home up to 10 pounds of crystals, plus one large cluster. There are few things more fun than playing in the mud for kids of any age, and crystal digging becomes a contest to see who can find the biggest, the most perfectly shaped, the best hourglass, or the largest cluster. Crystals measuring up to seven inches long have been found here, along with complex clusters weighing as much as 38 pounds. We didn't find anything nearly that impressive, but we still counted ourselves winners because this freakishly amazing natural wonder belongs to us all. At the Salt Plains National Wildlife Refuge in Jet, I'm Shell Wagner. It's amazing what a shovel and a little elbow grease will actually turn up. I know you've turned up a cool museum down in South Oklahoma City, and when mm -hmm. people hear about this, I know I did, I thought it was a little creepy, but it's fascinating. It is fascinating, it's a lot of fun, very mm -hmm. educational. We're gonna take you there right now. And it's that whale skeleton that sort of jumps out at you first thing. A trip to the Museum of Osteology is, to say the least, an eye-opening experience. And again, the humpback whale is essentially the centerpiece here, not only for its sheer size, but because it was difficult to obtain. Obviously, we don't go out and, and kill anything for our museum, um, but we waited um, uh, Sooner or later, an animal is going to die, um, and when whales die, they wash up on a beach somewhere. Um, we thankfully didn't have to go out and do the uh, nasty work of collecting the bones. There were some volunteers in the state of Massachusetts that did that for us. And several years later, this is where it stands, or technically hangs. The Museum of Osteology was created by Jay Villamarat, who also started a biological supply company called Skulls Unlimited, and that was over 25 years ago. They supply skulls and skeletons to classrooms, museums, and universities around the world. 
And for Jay and Joey, though, it's all about education. We cater to educational groups, whether it be public schools, home schools, or specialty groups. Um, we enjoy um, bringing them to the museum and um, hopefully teaching something at the same time. And consequently, the museum designed mostly by Joey reflects the educational mindset. He says they needed certain exhibits to teach more than just a display. When they come to the museum, a lot of times they will experience many of the freestanding skeletons that we have in the center of the room here, some of the very large ones that surround us here. And it seems like they're, they're very taken back that they can actually go up and, with respect, touch an elephant skull, touch a giraffe's leg, stand next to it and look up and see just how large the specimen is. Um, we don't have any of the specimens roped off because we do want to um, allow the public to be able to, to touch these specimens. We don't want everything to be behind glass because we believe that a lot of education happens with hands-on learning. Joey adds they get tremendous feedback from everyone who comes through. The first thing out of most people's mouth when they walk in is wow. Um, they look around and they see all the specimens and um, we hear a lot of times we didn't expect that this museum would be this professionally done. I think people are expecting more of a kind of a roadside attraction but uh, we've, we've, we've gone out of our way to uh, make a museum that's as educationally minded and professionally minded as possible. And that it is. You'll be able to see over 300 skeletons and skulls, things from the far reaches of the planet, some that are critically endangered, and a few that are even extinct. And on the way out, you can stop by the fun gift shop and find items ranging from coffee mugs to t-shirts, memorabilia, stuffed animals, and plants that wave at you. Come to the Museum of Osteology. You'll have a whale of a time. In Oklahoma City, I'm Dino Lolly. We're off and running, but we have a lot more things to dig up for you. How about some ancient artifacts in eastern Oklahoma? We're digging up prehistoric Oklahoma history when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues. It was a Saturday morning and I went to an exercise class. As soon as the class ends, I go to the parking lot and somebody had stolen my car. I couldn't believe it. So I called AAA Insurance. They offered me a rental car. They told me everything was going to be all right. So when my car was found a week later, they said, Bob, you need to change the locks on your car. I would have never thought about that if it wasn't for AAA. They really took care of me. Get great service, low rates, and a free auto insurance quote today. Want to get away? Oklahoma road trips are fuel for the soul. To get your motor running, visit TravelOK.com for brochures, inspiration, and loads of savings. A few clicks will put you on the open road to adventure. At TravelOK.com slash road trips, it's easy to find a getaway that moves you. We've reinvented the road trip. Come along for the ride. It was almost comical. It was like, I can't believe this even happened. I look down the street, I see there's a tree across my son's car. I was just like, I called my AAA agent, Patty. She said, we can take care of this. AAA and Patty are great. You just feel like they have your back. They make everything as easy as possible. I mean, they really take good care of us. Get great service, low rates, and a free auto insurance quote today. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. We are excavating interesting destinations for you this week. I know you just dug up a whole bag of bones. I did, and it was a lot of fun. But Jennifer here found an entire lost civilization near the town of Spyro in eastern Oklahoma. It's a fascinating place. Mystery still surrounds this prehistoric people and their burial mounds. The Spyro Mounds archaeological site in eastern Oklahoma is a quiet and peaceful place now, so it's hard to imagine that this spot was once a bustling center of commerce and religion that literally was the capital of the known world. But it's true. For a thousand years, from 600 to 1600 AD, the leaders of this city of about 10,000 people presided over an entire culture, the Mississippian. Not a nation really, but a confederation of over 60 different tribes, over 30 different language groups, well over 3 million people, and stretched all the way from the Rockies to the Virginia coast, from the Gulf Coast of Florida to the Great Lakes. Now their trade extended further. I mean, Spiro's trade goes all the way from the Gulf of California east. So pretty much most of the United States either had contact with them or was controlled by the leaders here at Spiro. 
Uh, Spyro was kind of the Washington, D.C. for their time. Dennis Peterson is the manager of the Spyro Mounds Archaeological Center. He spent two decades studying these amazing people whose religious and trading influence spanned the continent. He says they were farmers who lived in huts like this one who were greatly influenced by the solar calendar. So on the winter solstice, when the sun's at its furthest point to the south, the sun will line up with house mound number six. At the summer solstice, when the sun is at its furthest point to the north, the sun will line up with house mound number three. And when the sun is at its midpoints, the vernal, which is the spring equinox, and the fall, or autumnal equinox, the sun will set, so it sets right over house mound two, which is directly towards the west. Peterson believes that it was a hundred year change in the weather pattern that led to the demise of the Spiro influence as people lost confidence in their leader's ability to protect them. Inside the museum on the grounds, there are stunning examples of the art of the Spyro people. Carved shells that served as art and also identification for messengers. Figurines and sculptures that depict the Spyro people as they saw themselves and also the tools of everyday life. Most of it was excavated from this mound, the Burial Mound or the Craig Mound as it's known. In 1933, treasure hunters dug into the mound and sold tons of artifacts to collectors until government intervention stopped them. The result is that you will see Spyro artifacts everywhere. From the Smithsonian to UCLA, University of Chicago, the University of Texas, the stuff in the Louvre in Paris, the British Museum in London, Stuff in Leningrad, Yugoslavia, Saudi Arabia, Buenos Aires, Peking, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, outside Jerusalem. We have not lost the Spyro people. Their faces peer back at us from their sculpture, from the murals that depict their rituals. In many ways, they never left. For those they influenced, the Cherokees, Choctaws, Creeks, the Caddo, and the Wichita, and many other tribes live here today. And you can see the Spyro cultural influence in their art and customs visit the past and understand the present a little better. We recently sent our man about town's Adam Beatty down to the town of Shawnee to look around a bit. And for Adam's knack of discovering the unusual, yep. that's a nice way to put it, we were <laughs> not a bit surprised to find him at the state's oldest museum and he was sifting through some treasure troves of ancient history. Tucked away in Shawnee on the picturesque campus of St. Gregory's is the Maybe Guerra Museum. What began as an art studio for Father Gregory Guerrero back in 1914 has evolved into a beautiful and unique museum that has art dating back to over 8,000 years. Made more accessible to the public in 1919 with the opening of Byzantine Hall, Father Guerrero's collection grew as he continued to produce his own works while also avidly collecting art from around the world. One of the first pieces you will notice is the massive portrait of Pope Pius X. This was Father Guerrero's first commission he received while traveling through Europe studying art and art history in an attempt to bring culture to the frontier in Oklahoma. After winning an award at the 1905 World's Fair in St. Louis, Father Guerrero became highly sought after as a painter and art historian. I spoke with Dane Polai, director and chief curator, about how they continue the legacy established by Father Guerrero. We still have the very same kind of philosophy that Father Guerrero had, where he was an artist, he was an art historian, we work with contemporary Oklahoma artists, we work with um, nationally recognized artists, um, we do some of our exhibits, our special exhibits are historical in nature. Um, we really want it to be that broad and partly, uh, you know, back in Father Guerra's day, people didn't travel. And so someone coming to the museum in 1920 uh, would have been the first time they seen something from Europe or something from ancient Egypt. And for many of the rural kids we get through the museum today, that's still the case. It's their first exposure to the big world that's out there. And what a big world it is. This place has art from the Renaissance, ancient Egypt, the medieval period, all the way up to contemporary pieces, including the Hudson River School of Painters. And kids, they have a real life mummy that you can check out. I have to admit, it's my first time seeing a mummy up close and personal, and it was pretty cool just thinking about how old that person was and what she may have been like. They're not well known for their Native American collection, but that all changes now. We got to go back behind the scenes and get a small preview of an upcoming summer exhibition of Native American art. We're trying to redesign the Indian exhibit so that it has more Oklahoma material in it and shows off some of the, the real gems of the collection that are both from inside and outside Oklahoma. With over 95% of the collection in storage, this place is always changing things up, putting new pieces on display. I think my personal favorite stuff was the Japanese samurai pieces they had. 
They accommodate over 10,000 students a year and would love to show off their collection to a new group of kids. They also have an awesome little store up front where you can purchase a wide variety of gifts and trinkets to commemorate your time at the museum. I'd like to thank Dane, Marshall, and everyone else for introducing me to this wonderful gem of a museum. In Shawnee, Oklahoma, I'm Adam Beatty. All the information you'll need to plan your visit to the Maybe Gira Museum of Art in Shawnee is just a click away on TravelOK.com. I think it's time to dig up some great digs. We found a few places to rest your weary bones when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues. It was almost comical. It was like, I can't believe this even happened. I look down the street, I see there's a tree across my son's car. I was just like, I called my AAA agent, Patty. She said, we can take care of this. AAA and Patty are great. You just feel like they have your back. They make everything as easy as possible. I mean, they really take good care of us. Get great service, low rates, and a free auto insurance quote today. Want to get away? Oklahoma road trips are fuel for the soul. To get your motor running, visit TravelOK.com for brochures, inspiration, and loads of savings. A few clicks will put you on the open road to adventure. At TravelOK.com slash road trips, it's easy to find a getaway that moves you. We've reinvented the road trip. Come along for the ride. It was a Saturday morning and I went to an exercise class. As soon as the class ends, I go to the parking lot and somebody had stolen my car. I couldn't believe it. So I called AAA Insurance. They offered me a rental car. They told me everything was going to be all right. So when my car was found a week later, they said, Bob, you need to change the locks on your car. I would have never thought about that if it wasn't for AAA. They really took care of me. Get great service, low rates, and a free auto insurance quote today. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. And if you're gonna be out there discovering our state's fascinating history and unique and varied terrain, eventually you're gonna to wanna to kick back and relax. Absolutely, and Shell Wagner has unearthed some fun digs and you can do just that. Tucked into just about every corner of the state are nooks to call home during your next Oklahoma getaway, no matter your preferences. If you've avoided bed and breakfasts because, well, maybe your husband's not prone to speaking before noon, then the Pembroke Cottage on a shady lane in Guthrie may be your perfect compromise. When someone comes to Pembroke Cottage, they have the whole house to themselves. So whether it's a, a couple or whether it's a family, they have the whole home to themselves. And uh, we try to uh, keep it quiet and, and just let them feel like they're here all by themselves and just a relaxing getaway. Continental breakfast items like freshly baked cranberry bread are at your fingertips so that you can enjoy on your own schedule. We're on a, a real quiet street here and yet we're only a mile from Interstate 35 and, and less than that from Highway 33. So next time you want to get away from it all without a crowd, this cozy cottage may just suit your needs. If your need is for authentically Oklahoma accommodations, then Romano State Park has got you covered. These canyon lands were once the allotment of the Cheyenne tribe, and you can spend the night slumbering in one of these teepees while imagining yourself part of an Indian encampment on this very soil. If teepee sleeping doesn't float your boat, here's a resting place that will. These cabins are all floating actually on the lake and swimming, fishing, pulling your boat right up to the to the cabin itself, um, that's one of the unique features about this. There's just not anything else around uh, in the state like it. Well, we have units that sleep from 18, which we call our atrium lodge, um, and down to just two people. So really we can accommodate any kind of groups. This puts an entirely different slant on the waterbed concept. Speaking of different concepts, are you yearning for a yurt? My family and I found the yurt of our dreams at Elephant Rock Nature Park in Tahlequah. The yurts are like fancy tents that are already pitched with real beds and because I know you're wondering, yes, there's a bathroom inside with a shower. You have all, all the creature comforts, air conditioned, heated, kitchen, uh, but you can step outside the door and, and have nature. You'll find a similar concept at Twin Bridges State Park, only these they call lake huts. They offer conveniences such as electricity, ceiling fans, screened windows, and tiled floors. 
a step up from roughing it in a tent. As you can see, Oklahoma has so many options where a weary traveler can comfortably hang his hat. In Guthrie, Watonga, Ardmore, Tahlequah, and Fairland, I'm Shell Wagner. Hey, we've made a really great discovery right here, Ned. We did, and we didn't even need a pickaxe or a shovel. Resurrecting the past with treasures from Jerusalem and AAA's Discover Oklahoma returns in just a couple of minutes. It was a Saturday morning and I went to an exercise class. As soon as the class ends, I go to the parking lot and somebody had stolen my car. I couldn't believe it. So I called AAA Insurance. They offered me a rental car. They told me everything was gonna be all right. So when my car was found a week later, they said, Bob, you need to change the locks on your car. I would have never thought about that if it wasn't for AAA. They really took care of me. Get great service, low rates, and a free auto insurance quote today. Want to get away? Oklahoma road trips are fuel for the soul. To get your motor running, visit TravelOK.com for brochures, inspiration, and loads of savings. A few clicks will put you on the open road to adventure. At TravelOK.com slash road trips, it's easy to find a getaway that moves you. We reinvented the road trip. Come along for the ride. It was almost comical. It was like, I can't believe this even happened. I look down the street, I see there's a tree across my son's car. I was just like, I called my AAA agent, Patty. She said, we can take care of this. AAA and Patty are great. You just feel like they have your back. They make everything as easy as possible. I mean, they really take good care of us. Get great service, low rates, and a free auto insurance quote today. Welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other great things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. Hello, Chuck May here with AAA Oklahoma. If you're like me, you'll agree that Oklahoma is a great place to live. But I'll bet you would also agree that we receive our fair share of extreme weather. Often this weather can cause damage to your home. Many insurance companies in Oklahoma have established limitations to their homeowners' policies particularly for wind and hail, that are important for customers to understand. Our AAA insurance agents are available in 41 offices statewide to review your current homeowner's policy with you. Call an agent today to get a free quote and policy review on your home insurance. Whether it's a thunderstorm, hail, tornado, fire, or theft, get the security you desire with homeowner's insurance from AAA. Until next time, may the road lead you to exciting new discoveries. Whether it's insurance, travel, or peace of mind on the road, think AAA every day. AAA for the ones who matter most to you. You may be surprised to learn that two of the most significant artifacts ever discovered in Jerusalem are on display here in Edmond at the Armstrong Auditorium. And recently I had a chance to visit with a couple of the Oklahoma-based archaeologists, some of whom are students, involved in this amazing project. This archaeology exhibit is called Seals of Jeremiah's Captors Discovered. It's a fascinating journey through ancient Jerusalem and the pages of the Bible. The entire exhibit is interactive and multimedia. You can also view a number of documentaries while here, and they examine not only ancient Jerusalem, but also the work of Jeremiah and much more. It also highlights the work of Dr. Elot Mazar from Hebrew University who uncovered all of these artifacts. Well, the significance of this exhibit is that people can come and discover that science and the Bible do converge. They do agree. This is absolute, colossal proof that the book of Jeremiah and what he wrote about is true. And it's proven by science and history. 
Now the stars, so to speak, of this exhibit are two tiny little pieces called boule. A boule is a piece of clay stamped with the seal of a king or high-ranking government official. And what makes these two boule so extraordinary is that the Hebrew inscription on both of them is an exact match to the names of two princes mentioned in the book of Jeremiah. And only three boule with biblical names on them have ever been found in controlled scientific studies. So two of them now reside at the Armstrong Auditorium, not the Louvre or the Met, but in Edmond, Oklahoma. Harley Breath will be returning to the dig very soon. He said he learned a lot from being on the location at the archeological excavation in Jerusalem. I learned that it's very organized and it's very precise. There's a lot of methods and the methodology is just so calculated. And making the trip for the first time as a third year student at Armstrong College. I think that it's definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm really looking forward to experiencing it with um, 19 other individuals that I'm really close to. This world premiere exhibition will remain at the Armstrong Auditorium until October 16th of 2012. For information on exhibit hours and directions, click on over to travelok.com. It's worth coming to see the artifacts and this incredible facility. If you've never been here, you really need to come through for a tour. It's very impressive. We want to thank the folks here at the Armstrong Auditorium for hosting us tonight. Next week, big destination ideas for your little ones. Discover your pint-sized scientist, or maybe your mini marine biologist, your budding artist, architect, or ambassador. We're getting childish on the next episode of Discover Oklahoma. Hope you'll join us. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover or dig up here in <laughs> Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.